don't come, I don't show. Hey, hey, sit down. Hey, Martins. Hey, just oh yo yo. Hey, everybody. Let me. Come and don't show. Hey, hey, sit down. Hey, Jay Martin. Hey, just go yo yo. Hey, everybody, let me.
Welcome to another political perspective today. My name is If Anya Okali, the host. Here with me we have the executive governor of Abia State, no other person than Dr. Okeze Ibazu Pieze. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, fine. How are you? Fine, I'm good. Your Excellency, let's begin with the 5G governors, which you are a member of. Mm -hmm. Okay, the group has uh, refused to shift ground despite all uh, the conspiratory efforts. With barely two months to presidential election, are you afraid your party, PDP? Well, um, let me say that it is not the G5 not shifting ground, but it is um, perhaps our party not being sensitive enough to what we are saying. And uh, the, 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 the G5 philosophy is beyond 2023 election. We are talking about the, the, the rainbow nature of the Nigerian political space or sociocultural space. Um, we have over 260 ethnic nationalities and uh, we have different people. God has brought us all together in this country. And um, uh, other countries like ours have evolved from uh, this diversity to become very, very powerful nations, leveraging the competencies uh, inherent in the various uh, um, nationalities that make up uh, the country. But Nigeria seems to have come to a point where we have started mismanaging our diversity. So what the G5 stands for is for a new paradigm that will be sensitive to uh, inclusiveness, including all parts of Nigeria, one way or another, or giving confidence that um, whether you are in power or not, that you are um, an important component of the, 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 the system. It's also about including the youth, women, the artisans, the disabled, all kinds of people. And so we are saying, if somebody is complaining and there is an issue, um, issue of integrity, issue of uh, keeping promises, issue of um, making sure that um, if we say, after me, it's you, and when that comes, it happens, that it will stabilize us as a country and engender social mobilization sufficient to tackle the security problem, tackle the economic problem, tackle other problems that confront us in this country. Um, uh, and we say that it is the most critical ingredient today, beyond anything, social mobilization, inclusiveness, integrity, mutual respect, trust. So it is, G5 speaks to a new paradigm. It is beyond 2023 speaks about a new paradigm. In 2027, I will still want a system that will include everybody, irrespective of what the outcomes of the 2023 election is. So it doesn't matter the political party. It doesn't matter um, wherever you see me, wherever you see the G5 governors, we will stand for the protection of those who, as it were, uh, were thought to be uh, maltreated or mistreated. Uh, in this case, it is between the North and the South. And we're saying we want a strong North that respects the South, just as we want a strong South that has respect for the North. That way, our full capacities can be deployed to solve our problems, which is number one, social mobilization, critical towards solving our security problems, solving our economic problems, solving our problem of mutual trust uh, going forward. All right, recently uh, you inspected uh, the construction site of the new government house. Are you satisfied with the job so far? And do you see the possibility uh, of its uh, completion before your tenure wins uh, than May next year? Certainly. Certainly. We have over 120 workers 
in that place. Um, all the tiling work has been done. Uh, the windows are in place. Uh, the doors will be arriving uh, first week of January. Um, and in fact, as I, I, I speak to you today, we, we have started looking for uh, ways of furnishing uh, uh, that lodge. And, and luckily, uh, we, we have capacity to do 70% of uh, what we need for furnishing locally. So uh, I'm sure that that government house will be ready. All right, so um, one of the biggest road in Aba, first road, has uh, remained an issue of concern despite several efforts by your administration to get it working. Why has it remained a source of worry to the people? It is a source of worry to the people and to me because Fox Road is uh, a major economic um, gateway. It leads to area area international market, which is the biggest market in uh, West Africa. And therefore, um, a good chunk of our economy here depends on what happens around there. Uh, incidentally, that road lies um, uh, on the west of uh, the biggest pond in Aba, the Fogra Pond, which perhaps is the lowest point in the entire Abia state. What it means is that storm water naturally uh, flow towards Ariaria, towards the Fogra Pond. And before now, um, all kinds of developments around Ariaria has led to constriction of the volume in the Fogra, causing overflow and uh, water perpetually looking for where to settle because the track has been disturbed and blocked. And then uh, with the uh, attitude of the average other person to block drainages here and there. Um, so to deal with that road, we needed to get um, uh, the best engineers. So we deployed the uh, uh, Citraco. They got a site engineer from Netherlands. You know that Netherlands are very good in uh, water management and constructing on water. So um, drainages were done. Six and half kilometers to water side. And then um, we also established a head pump from where water was pumped from the Fobra to water side whenever there is an overflow. We dredged the Fobra and all of that. But shortly after Setraco delivered the road to the point where they did what they call binding course, the road was looking beautiful. It was looking beautiful. But it coincided with the period of the NSAS episode. And the market was locked down. Everywhere went on lockdown. Uh, the COVID years came. And for several months, for several months, Area Area did not operate the markets. And suddenly, the worker, the Area Area traders, and some traditional rulers walked up to me and said, Please, could you, Mr. Governor, open that road and give us access to our market? I consulted with the contractors and they said no, that what they had on the road was just the binding cost and they needed some money to do the wearing cost. Otherwise, that it will fail. But the better part of my benevolence took over and I said my people were coming down from a lockdown and I did not want uh, them to continue to suffer. So I took the risk and opened the road on my own volition. And then the road collapsed. So what I am a very good person in terms of turning adversary to advantage. So we decided to now change the design. So we are doing what we are best known for here, which is rigid pavement. So we are doing 12 inch concrete. So I want to assure you that that road will give me 40 years. You are speaking like an engineer. Are you an engineer? <laughs> By association. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a short break and we will come back to we'll continue with the executive governor of Abia State. <laughs> Stay tuned.
pese okunbule mirikiti mi huwa mawonjuru la sene yete Nigeria pete mpete. Boto nye lu unu ndira toga weta kuhunu. Mwa kuhunu ndide huwa nyantara honu bilu half current mbo kwa stopa madu unu ndira. Ufodo na nonuna na sene yete ndibe heke chanye, ufodo biare subeke, ufodo biare logo, ufodo biare kono, potana TV na newspaper oku ago. Oboda boto roka ndine mwere mado. Sofia, me go de imagine, ebe doktor ki ze vikti ipa zo batra kono na senet, e no chite mi iku chito onu obodo. Nigeria ni lega amata na abia saute donye la mado. Oga ge buo ge bidon, owa ni la honanya, oga ga hapo uzo pye waya, makano oma rampa abia saut, mara kwa nonyo lo yana abuwa kana ga chuoke. Inye ni la abia saut senetori ya zonu choro, juru ni imo ke zi ipa zo petem petem. Ya mele bianyaka ebe serembolare, PDP, koke ni lindura abia saut ndoto lo, voto bili tunye ro ke zi ipa zo na PDP ebe serembolare. Bumpura omu ikunyere, mako de ma abia saut ta, nechi. Kimbeso kumbuli mili kiti mihuwa mawo njuru la sene yete Nigeria pete mpete. Boto nye lu unu ndira toga weta kuhunu. Mwa kuhunu ndide huwa nyantara honu nwa bilu half current mbo kwa stopa madu unu ndira. Ufodo na nonuna na sene yete ndibe heke chanye, ufodo biare subeke, ufodo biare logo, ufodo biare kono, potana TV na newspaper oku ago. Oboda boto roka ndine mwere mado. Tofia, me go de imagine, ebe doktor ki ze vikti ipa zo batra kono na senet, e no chite mi iku chito onu obodo. Nigeria ni lega amata na abia saute donye la mado. Oga ge buo ge bidon, owa ni la honanya, oga ga hapo uzo pye waya, makano oma rampa abia saute, mwana kwa nonyo lo yana abuwa kana ga chuoke. Inye ni la abia saute senetori ya zonu choro, juru ni imo ke zi ipa zo petem petem. Ya mele bianyaka ebe serembolare, PDP, koke ni lindura abia saute ndoto lo, voto bili tunye ro ke zi ipa zo na PDP ebe serembolare. Bumpura omu ikunyere, mako de ma abia saute ta, nechi. ABN is at it again. It's the time for the reversible and political leadership project evidence in Nigeria. Get ready for the most detailed online TV and radio program tagged Operation Show Your Project. Operation Show Your Project. Showing every Thursday 11 a.m. on ABN TV and radio. Operation Show Your Project is the authentic platform for all elected and appointed leaders in politics at all levels to showcase their accomplishments within the period in office. For project documentation and production, contact us today on 0816-634-7017. On 0816-634-7017. Operation Show Your Project comes up every Thursday at 11 a.m. on ABN TV and radio. Be part of the testimony. All right, welcome back to Political Perspective today. With me, we have the uh, Executive Governor of Abia State, not the person that... Um, Dr. Okezie Ibazo. Sir, you have uh, severally talked about uh, uh, restoring Aba uh, master plan. What exactly does it entail and do you think your administration can accomplish it before May 29? Well, development is a process. Development is a process. And one must view development from the angle of the fact that Societies evolve. Uh, so what a leader should do is to be able to chart a course and uh, evolve a pathway so that uh, development can be channeled in a certain direction towards a certain goal. So it is not for me about the things I complete, but it is for me the things I put in place and run them to a point where they become irreversible such that a new leader will not be able to reverse it. Today, if you ask me my greatest achievements, I will say, well, first, is that we've given out there for the first time a long-term development plan. So um, anybody who is coming after me will receive from me, first, before the handover note, a long-term 30-year development plan for my state, which will run on massive urban renewal and uh, development and commercialization of cities like Rohovia uh, and Omoahia. And then drawing strength from SME uh, development, which we are number one in Nigeria, and then trade and commerce and agriculture. So, um, having said that, the urban renewal effort is um, a child of the fact that 
development that is not controlled equals to confusion. So what you see today, including places where you have flood problems, is as a result of unplanned, unstructured development. Um, you, 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 you may ask, for us in this government, in 2015, we read the NIMET predictions about the flooding that is happening this year. That is why we are not so badly impacted. And we dredged Ifobra Pond, Omaabai Pond, Orata Pond, and Waterside twice. As I speak, I'm going back to dredge them again. I even hear people talk about uh, palliatives and things that will be given to those affected. Yes, we will receive whatever is brought for those who are affected and all of that. But we will spend much more time and money preventing the flood from happening again. You know, so this is what planning brings. Uh, Abba Master Plan will happen because it's a 600 million counterpart funding from our state to UN Habitat. So we are doing it with international partners that are beyond and outside the control of the state. And as I speak, they are here in Abba. So I have put that process on the path of irreversibility. And um, it will go far, far enough to enable me to structure my development along the vision that the master plan will, will chart. And then make sure that whosoever comes after me has a template and a compass based on which to develop uh, as we are going forward. All right, two governors before you are currently in the Senate. You are seeking election to represent Arabia South in 2023. Are you keeping to what appears to be a tradition for former Abia state governors by seeking a senatorial seat. Yes, but that is the second reason, or perhaps the third. The first reason is the fact that no, 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 without sounding immodest, only very few leaders in this, in Abia state, especially from this part of Abia, can claim to understand the problem of Abia South better than me, vis a vis our relationship with other senatorial districts within Abia, other states within the southeast and the south-south, and then Nigeria. So because of this, it will be a complete disservice to my people if I fail to put myself forward. Because somehow I have age on my side, I have energy, and I have a deep understanding of what our needs are, both in terms of infrastructure in terms of requisite contacts and uh, drawing attention to the critical needs of the people of other states and um, thirdly i like to pride myself as a man that is not ambitious therefore i'm going to confine my energy to uh, developing abia south within an improved abia polity within committee of states in the South, South and Southeast, and then as an important member of the Nigerian community. So it will benefit the people of Abia South uh, if I intervene at the level of the Senate for the next four years and we'll see the results. All right, before we leave you, um, since uh, return of democracy in 1999, you are the only governor who completed your two years tenure with one deputy. What a strategy did you do to achieve this? I'm also one of the few governors that um, has no problem with uh, his predecessor and has maintained a uh, cordial relationship within the three arms of government, judiciary, and the legislature. The secret is the fact that um, for us, Abia is more important than any individual. And I understand leadership from the prism of the fact that I must aggregate all forces of development towards achieving the idea of our dream. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave anybody out of the boat. And because I'm the leader, compromises fall on my shoulder to make. So, if there are compromises to be made, as a leader, I'm in a place to make those compromises. 
But I also have the requisite skill to attract appearance of various persuasions because I don't come with any air of arrogance whatsoever. Rather, I come uh, with the philosophy of servant leadership. And part of my campaign promise in 2015 was that I was going to present a platform for every Abia. Let me tell you an extension of that. Abia State today is perhaps one of the few states in Nigeria that has a diaspora commission. I have a robust diaspora participation in my government. They have established a hospital here. We have facilities that they are running. They bring expertise. Yesterday, I was at the foundation laying ceremony of an ultramodern diagnostic lab prepared and powered by our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. I've had them come here, some experts from Arochuku, conduct kidney transplant here in Abia State. So I, 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 God has blessed me with the requisite skill to bring all kinds of people to the table for the betterment of our dear state. Um, so, my, 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 my deputy has been my ally, and I've not had any reason whatsoever to regret having him. Um, I respect his individuality, but I also respect his capacity. He's a chartered accountant, he was a PhD, and he has been the chairman of the um, Revenue Council. Not many governors will give Revenue Council to their deputy, but I have confidence in myself to the point that I can trust another person. All right, Abia has uh, recently enjoyed relative calmness in terms of peace and security. What measures did you put in place and what is the place of uh, Ibubago in the Southeast? Um, let, me, let me start with um, our philosophy in terms of security. We think that our major primary objective is to keep Abia safe. And under my watch, no Abia son or daughter should be split, spilled uh, on our soil here. Therefore, the words I speak, the actions I take, even the ones I don't take, all add up to. Beyond that, I have a very good knowledge of, I take security issues seriously. You need to be around when I address the security council meeting. I know every border town. And I know the town next to the border town in the next state. And I know the activities in those border towns in neighboring states as it concerns my state. Uh, so when I brief the Commission of Police and the law enforcement agencies, I tell them with pinpoint accuracy what I want them to do and where they should be. But beyond that, the approach to battle insecurity has to be a two-pronged approach. We must work hard on the economy. And uh, working hard on the economy for us was to start with the things we do well. We are literally shoemakers, tellers. We manufacture things with our hands. So from 2015 till now, everything that I have done is either intervening directly on these or providing enablers. You just ask me questions about Fox Road. I'm on Fox Road because of our area. The road leading to my village was just commissioned two weeks ago. So it wasn't a priority because there's no market in my village. And I alone was not enough to attract that kind of expenditure there. So I needed to do Ungwa Road because of Ungwa Road market. I needed to do Ezuku Road because of Ezuku market. I needed to do Fox Road because of our area. And I need to do roads that connect Akwa Ibom and Aba. Because I need Akwa Ibom people, Cross River people, Oron people and Kweirunians to come to Aba. So, I must find a way to weave together yeah, all of this thinking. I need to spend time and money bringing geometrics so that power supply will be steady here. Because my people are not beggars. All we're asking is for an environment and we do the things we know how to do well.